And we have five of the top eight ranked teams in the world, including the Americans. And they feature Jimmer Fredette. And Jimmer what? is a <laughs> name who played in the NBA and is a legend in uh, NCAA Division One and in China, where he averaged, I, I think, about 35 points a game in the Chinese Pro League. Welcome to the War Scouts Basketball Podcast with Mike and Name. I'm Name Cardinal, as usual, here with my broski, Michael Swampy. How you doing? Doing good. Oh, how are you, wonderful people? Thanks for tuning in, as always. Yeah, you're probably in good spirits on that summer vacation now. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> shout out to all the teachers out there. We're all on vacation, summer vacay. Uh, what yeah. is well-deserved. Definitely. And I'm over here having FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> I miss this time of year. Like, teacher, like the last month of school is just like, you feel like that ant anticipation of summer coming. Mm -hmm. You're like, just like a few more days of classes, got to get through final exams and diplomas. Yeah. And we're out. And we're out. Yeah. When there's about three weeks left of school and you're like, okay, all right, we only have, you know, 14 actual teaching days left here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, count, the countdown is on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good time of year. So, we got uh, big plans for the summer? Uh, nothing too crazy. Just going to be, as we mentioned previously, I did move into a new town. So, uh, hopefully, get our house completely settled over the summer and then enjoy my time, relax, and have some uh, good family time. Something that, as the school year goes on, you definitely kind of uh, don't get a whole whole lot of so gonna be enjoying that family time with the with the little one here so yeah oh, yourself awesome. uh i am going to be busy i am starting school in july and then uh taking a week and going to edmonton to go visit so those oh. are my big plans for the summer other than work other than work yeah yeah, going so. back to school again yeah again so like the fifth time just a forever <laughs> student yeah time to, time time to uh get serious about life here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> finish my grade 12 <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh yeah yeah it's gonna be busy time it's gonna be busy time I, i've been out of school for five years so we'll see how things go Awesome. It's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to coming to Edmonton um, mm -hmm. because, well, coming during K-Day, so we're going to be there for a week. And then we're going to be coming again in August for the uh, – I'm plan this is the plan to come to Alberta Indigenous Games. My nephew who lives up in high level, he's a pretty good athlete, and uh, he's asked me to coach his basketball team for AIG called awesome. the Bannock Boys. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah, he's going into grade twelve, and he he won athlete of the year at his high school this year. Oh, that's wicked! Yeah, coach name going to be coaching up the the Bannock boys. Yeah, they they didn't go with the uh, I don't know the fry bread ballers or something like that. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, man. You know, I haven't coached basketball since I left there, so. We're like talking four and a half years. Uh, it's just like riding a bike. Oh, we'll see. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't think too much has changed in four years. I don't know, man. Uh, we'll see. The game has changed quite a bit. But like, yeah, I, I'm a little uh, nervous. And when he asked me, I was like, you sure you want me to coach you? Like I am coached in, since 2019. <laughs> Late 2019. Like, yeah, it'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That'll be an exciting time, especially like that uh, second last weekend of August is is a pretty big time in Edmonton because of the, like you said, the Alberta Indigenous Games is pretty, it's going to be huge. Um, yeah. I know, I know Musquachese is sending in, I think like last year we had 11, 11 basketball teams. And I don't know what the number is this year, but Musquachese usually has a pretty, pretty big athlete count, which would be cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Shout out to Cleve. Shout out to Cleve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, doing that, doing that good work. Yeah. So, did you watch any of the NBA finals? I did. Unfortunately, like 
I think it was like the lowest viewed NBA finals in in quite a long time, which is kind of unfortunate because there was two really outstanding players on Dallas in Kyrie and Luca, but they just, they didn't play the, all that well. And Jalen Brown getting finals MVP. A lot of people thought that Jason Tatum probably should have got it just because of his performance throughout the entire playoffs. But mm-hmm. Jalen Brown on both ends was phenomenal. Like he had to guard Luca the entire time as well as create offensively. So uh, like hats off to him. I do just wish that it was all of those players on a different franchise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of the Celtics. I'm not like. Re- I'm really not a fan of any Boston no franchises as, a, at all. Like the, no, neither am I. Patriots, the Boston Red Sox, like you name it, Boston, the Bruins. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, no. Any Boston fans out there? Sorry, but uh, yeah, we're we're not cheering for your teams anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I did not watch any of the NBA finals. Admittedly, I did watch like I, I I did watch highlights. I looked at stats and stuff, but I didn't watch. I don't think I watched a minute of the like, any games. Like a, I think I was I was too caught up in Oilers euphoria. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I got yeah. my Oilers sweater on right now, paying homage to the team that almost made the reverse comeback. Oh man, it was unreal. It was unreal. McDavid, oh. McDavid, basically from games four to seven, where he was, he was phenomenal. The War Scouts Hockey Podcast happening right now for yeah. anybody tuning in. Yeah. yeah, I legitimately believe they were going to win. Like, yeah, I knew, like I was like, I know they're going to win. Like, I was like totally calm, even when they were down three nothing. I was like yeah. totally calm and just like chill. You know, when they were playing like the Canucks or like Dallas, yeah. like I was pretty high strung. And well. Um, that's the cool thing though is like especially if you had the best player in the series somebody that can just create like chances like mcdavid can there's always a chance right even yeah. if you do go yeah. down oh to three but <clears throat> after, after they won game five i thought i thought it was a for sure like they were gonna win the cup <laughs> yeah me too oh, <laughs> like there, there was people saying like they were down two games to three but they're saying the others have a two three lead on uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Florida>. <laughs> because yeah. All, like, all the momentum shifted right yeah and they like they could have won game three game three they could have won game one like it, it easily could have gone the other like uh the other way like they could have been up three two the one who was up three two after game five like mm-hmm. just uh sometimes the puck doesn't bounce the way or the ball doesn't bounce the way you want it to yeah yeah you do yeah. You do kind of see that in basketball too. Is like, you know, I, I am a casual. I'm the, I wouldn't say I'm a, the greatest hockey expert, but uh, I see similarities that happen in basketball too. Is sometimes people get nervous, and people get nervous, they kind of they don't take those chances or risk to try and drive it to the hoop or drive it to the net, you know. And I I felt like the Oilers were kind of lackadaisical in the sense in that last little bit. I could be wrong, but. Mm-hmm. That's sort of just what I saw in Game Seven. Yeah, it was a rough one. It was yeah. rough one. But back to uh, NBA Finals. The good mm-hmm. thing about Boston winning was uh, Edmund Tony and Jermaine Buckner is now an NBA champion. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. When I saw that, I was actually shocked. I didn't know Jermaine Buckner. And for those who are listening, Jermaine Buckner is a he's an Edmontonian. Edmontonian who went to Ross Shepard High School. Uh, he is working on the Boston Celtics uh, training staff, and yeah. he just won an NBA championship. Yeah, he he was part of that uh, Ross Shepard dynasty from the early two thousands that won like four provincials in a row, and he was just like an unreal player, and like everyone knew who he was. He was he was in Slam magazine. He played NCAA Division One basketball. Played on the national team, played pro, and now he's an NBA champion. Wow! He's from the city of champions, and now he's a champion, the highest so, level. So, if the others won, he should have been part of that parade. With the yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's in there with the Larry O'Brien Trophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool though. It, it's cool because like uh, he he's like such an icon in the city of Edmonton when it comes to basketball, and like he's also the cousin of uh, Andrew Parker, who we mentioned on this podcast mm-hmm. before. Yeah, and then in, uh, in other news, just recently, our most recent news: JJ Redick, former podcast host, is now the new Lakers head coach. He's coaching both LeBron, and by the time you hear this. He is also coaching Bronny, who was also just drafted. So yeah, he has that's... a fa- he has a father son duo in one of the most famous NBA franchises ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wild wild news coming out of LA lately. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, what, what do you uh, what do you think of the hire? I think that JJ Reddick is a very knowledgeable with basketball and the way he talks about the X's and O's, even on his podcast is very, very knowledgeable, but I don't know, like is LeBron going to be tackling most of those in game situations with his team? Cause he doesn't have a whole lot of experience. I think I saw one meme when it's like JJ Redick was a 2023 uh, U12 basketball coach for New Jersey or something. <laughs> Yeah, like his kids' it, club team, and now he's the Lakers head coach. Yeah, that's literally his basketball coaching experience is, is coaching his kids' kids team. And he, he's talked about it before on his podcast, too. Like, this was probably like a year ago when he was talking about coaching one day, and he said that was his only experience. So, I, I'm interested in seeing like his like in game management, his like relationship with players like from this new position he's like not a player anymore so now he's like gonna tr- immediately transition into this position where he's the head of the team yeah and what's that dynamic gonna be like with with the players yeah. who were who were once his peers like lebron yeah exactly and as a head coach you have to be again you have to know the tactics of the game you have to have to know the X's and O's, but there's also that responsibility of handling, you know, 12 different egos on the team. And how do you manage that? How do you get guys to gel together? Like, I don't know if JJ Redick was exactly that kind of guy. Maybe a, it, it's entirely different as a player when you're, when you're doing that as a player, because you can go to him as a friend, but mm-hmm. as a head coach, you kind of have that author, authoritative, you know, aspect to who you are and on the bench. So, It'll be interesting. I don't know. He'll probably do a better job than their previous coach. <laughs> but we'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see. Oh, I, I, I'm just interested in seeing how this all works out. The drama in Hollywood. Yep. Yeah. It's, ne- it's never ending. Yeah. that's it, it's, it's wild, though, that a father and son are playing on the same NBA team. Yeah, I can't believe it. Like... When we talk about nepotism name, this is a whole other. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny because I saw a a reel on Instagram today where I can't remember who it was, but it was someone from um, NBA media. He was talking about nepotism in the NBA. And he said, I don't want to hear that there's nepotism in the NBA now. It's always been there. It's always been in the front office. And now we're just seeing it with with the players. (laughs) Yeah, that was Woj. I think Woj was talking about that. <laughs> but I mean, the the other most recent example of that was uh, Theonis and Giannis, right? Yeah. But I I don't know. If I I I think Bronny will probably be better than Theonis, but it also helps that your your dad's a billionaire who plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that always helps. And yeah, recently you. Uh... You just went to see EBL game. How was that? I I did, yeah. Um, so after my big CEBL spiel, uh, Gordon Naylor, friend of the pod, said, "Hey, Swampy, you got to go to a game. You know, you got to experience this." So he gave me some tickets. So I went with me and my buddy Mark and went and watched the Stingers. And they played against uh, Calgary, Calgary Surge. So it was a battle of Alberta. Sold out game. It was actually it was awesome. Like the environment is was great. Uh I do have one one uh I wouldn't say it's necessarily a critique. I think it's just a downside of the target score. 
Mm-hmm. So we we were watching the game and and the Stingers were only down by one. It was a pretty low scoring game. It was eighty one to eighty two, and then with four minutes left, they put the target score at ninety. I think it was ninety two. Um, and then so uh, within probably a minute and twenty seconds, the game was over. The surge, they <laughs> they went they went on a surge. They quite literally, I think they hit. Uh, uh, they got an and one, two threes, and then finished it with a with another three pointer, and it was just wow. gone. It was done within you know that minute, and we're, I was like, "Oh man, that's a <laughs> that's a bummer." <laughs> <laughs> just deflated yeah. the whole house and the whole yeah. arena. <laughs> the vibe was just killed. Yeah, yeah, and oddly enough, I had never, I've never been to a Stingers game. Like they came into Edmonton, I think in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I lived there for like the first two seasons. Never had an opportunity to go to a game. Like it's like busy schedule, but like I would love to go to one. So if they're, I'm going to check the schedule. If they're playing while we're in Edmonton, I'm going to go check out a game. Yeah, that would be awesome. And they are, they just announced that they're expanding the season. So Rather, they doubled however many games they have. I think it was 12. They expanded it to 24. So, And uh, how is the facility they play in? Because they play out of the uh, Edmonton Expo Center, right? Yeah. Uh, they call it the Hangar. Uh, great facility. Like, we were kind of, we were on the second row, second level, I should say. And we, we still had great view of the entire, uh, the entire floor and, uh, obviously some arenas are different i know winnipeg has a i think they play in like a big hockey arena like it's pretty a pretty big stadium but the so the hangar holds for, like 4500 people and it was sold house sold out house so it was it was good and that's good to hear and like um you know people like i think people in general think of edmonton as a like a hockey city only but it's a big basketball city too like yeah there's there are so many people who play basketball there and any night of the week you can go anywhere and you can find a run if you want to like any night of the week you can yeah. you can find basketball even in the city basketball courts out, outdoor during the summer yeah yeah there's people always playing and another thing too if people are looking for tickets tickets are relatively cheap uh my buddy mark and i were just looking we we're hoping to go to a game like july 5th around there and Looking at court size, and I think they're only 120, 120 bucks, which is a steal. Wow. Yeah. Oh, court side tickets of pro basketball, 120 bucks. That's not good. like the not like the Oilers playoff run. Oh. Holy smoke. You can get in a moss pit for 120 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Secondhand tickets. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, tickets for the Oilers game, I think were like, some people were getting like, three grand for one ticket that's unreal Uh, yeah now with that said i looked at nba because the united states is playing an exhibition game in las vegas against team canada Mm -hmm. so i looked at tickets and i was just perusing i wanted to see what the ticket costs for behind the bench of the either the u.s or canada Mm -hmm. can you can you take a wild guess as to how much those tickets would have been Sitting behind LeBron or sitting behind Shea Gilchrist Alexander? Uh, 15,000. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. You, you, okay. There were 10 grand. 10 grand. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was over. Oh, but damn. That's <laughs> still a lot. Still. For, but, for an exhibition game. Yeah. And 10 grand American. So you were, you were thinking Canadian. That's why it was. Yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. yeah. That's right. You said you were correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, big weekend coming up next weekend in Edmonton hoop city 3x3 3x3 uh, quest challenger and 3x3 world tour tournament taking mm-hmm. place yeah that's a, another event like if if there's anything that Edmonton does well it is events and we mm. are co- we are considered one of the festival cities and this is just one of them I believe it's just right downtown, right next to Rogers Place. Uh, like the the area that it's in is pretty. It's pretty cool. It's wide open. Uh, you can walk around. There's hoops all over the place. There's courts everywhere. They got some fun activities for kids and that sort of thing. And then they have their big main court, 
that's uh, just staged right on the side there. So it's really cool. It's a fun event. I went last year uh, to that event, but I know in previous years it's been sort of uh, in other places. I think re- I think previous years it was in West Ed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went. I actually played in the Canada Quest in 2019, and that was quite the experience. Um, so yeah, but I played last year in just the competitive men's division. We played on some outdoor courts that were, you know, a little slanted, but <laughs> it was it was it still fun. Yeah. Didn't change the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, our our guest today is uh, Paul Sir, who's going to be talking more about this awesome event having um, ha- happening in Edmonton next week. But I want to hear more about your experience. 2019, West mm-hmm. Edmonton Mall. So you had huge calves at the time. <laughs> How how'd that tournament go for you? It's like my calves just disappeared since after <laughs> yeah. 2019. Yeah, that was sort of that was a little bit last minute. Um, our good buddy Dusty Legrand actually invited me out to play. Uh, there's this opportunity to enter in an all Indigenous team in 2019, and there's still an opportunity available right now. Uh, in 2024 but back in 2019 we we matched up against uh two local edmonton teams some college players some pro players from edmonton and then there was uh one team from winnipeg who was who was a at that time they were kind of like a competitive team that did the world challenge so they traveled all over they went to china and that sort of thing they're on the circuit and boy, let me tell you, the one guy that uh, I thought I could maybe match up against and skill-wise, he was also 6'4 and just like did whatever he wanted. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so it was it was fun. It was a good experience to have. But <clears throat> playing those games is entirely different than playing 5-on-5. Five and 5-on-5, five. Five five, you have an opportunity in those 48 minutes to you know take a rest, to take a sub, just to jog down the court. And sometimes I consider like jogging or walking up the court, just your rest until you get the ball. But in 3x3, it's so fast paced. It's what are the games? Uh, 14 minutes or something like that? Mm-hmm. 14 or minutes or long. First, or first to 21. Yeah, our first, yeah. our first to 21. That's correct. And then uh, each possession, uh, you only, you're only given uh, 12 seconds. Yeah, 10 minute game and you have a 12 second shot clock. So, uh possessions are going are going really quick as soon as somebody scores the person immediately grabs the ball takes it out of takes it beyond the three-point line and then they can score again so there's literally no opportunity to rest unless you had a sub and Mm -hmm. watching like that winnipeg team when they played first possession as soon as the whistle happened somebody immediately subbed off because they knew that if they stayed on any longer they were going to gas themselves out it was almost like it was almost like you needed hockey shifts out there. Mm-hmm. Bringing it back, bring it back to the Worst Scouts Hockey Podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you go longer than two minutes, you're you're going to be toast in those games. Change on the fly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it yeah. It's not like um, a three on three that we grew up with. It's like no. you know you check the ball at top. That's you do get a little bit of rest. This like as soon as the ball goes through the hoop defending team has a live basketball they can kick it right out and someone can shoot and score like yeah yeah it's it's crazy fast and uh we've held those style of tournaments in muscle cheese yep uh, a few years back is like fundraiser tournaments and uh yeah i i remember like a lot of people being confused and like hesitating mm-hmm. after they get the ball and like what do i do now and it, it you have to get used to it playing like that yeah and we recently had Paige uh, Crozen, who came on and talked about the Olympics. And if you haven't had a chance, uh, go check out that episode. She talks about her her experiences playing 3x3. And it's a really cool, fun, it's a different kind of basketball. but it's it's And it is street ball because when you play these games, like they they allow a lot of things go. Like it's very rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I remember you and Dusty being pretty bruised up after that tournament. Oh yeah. To be, with all that said, it was it was a blast, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think this year, if I do get a chance to play a quest, that would be awesome. But if not, then I'm totally 
okay with playing just the men's competitive or whatever, right? Mm, cool. Yeah. Yeah, more basketball coming up next month too. Native American Basketball Invitational taking place in Phoenix, Arizona. The biggest high school Native basketball tournament in North America. Mm-hmm. That way. I was looking at their socials and I saw that there's there's going to be three teams from Canada and two teams, uh, sorry, three te- three boys teams from Canada and two girls teams from Canada. So multiple teams entering from, from Canada now, which is good to see. It's, it's kind of crazy how how big this tournament is, eh? Yeah. You, you imagine like the logistics and coordination that goes into this thing? Like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to. <laughs> yeah, no, I do not want to. Do not even want to think about the yeah. headaches. And yeah. the, like, even just thinking about the amount of communication via emails and, oh my goodness. Prop, yeah. Props to all of them. Props to the organizers for, for putting on an event like this. Because when we went, we ended up going in 2010 and it was an amazing experience down yeah. in Phoenix, Arizona. Like, beautiful facilities, the beautiful host hotel. We got to go experience the Phoenix Suns Arena. Like it was, it was probably one of the best experiences I've had playing at a tournament, especially, and to be able to experience it while you're in high school is just the cherry, like the cherry on top. It was awesome. Yeah, it, I I feel like as a player, like I didn't play, I was coaching, but like as a player, like that would give you such like insight on next level basketball because mm-hmm. of those experiences, like playing in front of big crowds, playing in big gyms going to the like phoenix suns phoenix mercury facilities um all those things combined you know just even just like uh some of the boys on the team like coming from reserve being in muscochis and then going to a big city like florida just like a wonderful experience and then the, the one year we went there was also that team from northwest territories that called themselves team canada but oh yeah um, yeah but uh yeah, just like being from like small isolated communities and getting this experience is just it's such a great opportunity for kids to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm surprised uh there isn't more Canadian teams that actually go down there. There there are yeah. teams from New Zealand I saw, which is kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Wow. Can you imagine that trip? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the costs and everything, flights. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Yeah, I um yeah, I, I had such a great time there too, like just coaching and watching you guys play and even the lead up to it was was a great experience. Mm-hmm. It was such a good team too. We weren't exactly the most athletic players, especially when we we're playing against teams from the States who were entirely athletic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Should have won. Should have won. We should have won. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we ended up losing to the team that ended up winning the tournament and we lost to them on a buzzer beater. We missed the buzzer beater. We lost by one and I took that shot. And that same team that won the tournament ended up blowing everybody out by like 20. Yeah. Yeah. Even the final, the final wasn't close. No, not at all. Oh, Oh. uh, do that over again. Yeah. Do that over again. Emmons not taking that shot. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just kidding yeah he was on fire that game though he probably had like 36 points oh my Something gosh like all right are you getting excited for the olympics olympics basketball absolutely we get to watch the second coming of this dream team a lot of comparisons between the dream team and this current usa roster and questions as to whether this new one is better than than the michael jordan led uh, dream yeah. team the time will tell i'm i'm so excited i'm super excited like team canada has probably one of the best rosters they've ever put together like we have a yeah. finals mvp runner up or not finals mvp an nba mvp runner up in shea not only that yeah. but we got jamal like i think i love team canada's hopes i think we can medal in the olympics and uh It'll, we'll see. I don't know if this American team can gel. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, too. Like, I'm excited to see this Team Canada. 
see how Wiggins does finally playing for Team Canada um, <laughs> after all these years. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. And I, I, I just think like it's going to be pretty competitive. Like the top four or five teams are going to be really strong. It's going to be tough for whoever wins. Who, who do you think the four or five are? Um, Other than the United States, because that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Canada's in there. Yep. Um, I think Australia is in there. And who else would be in there? Uh, France. I think France. Oh, yeah. 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 France has a chance, like, especially with all these draft picks. Yes. Um, and, uh, Jokic. Jokic's country. Yes. Yeah. Ser yes. Serbia. Yes, Serbia. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Because <clears throat> don't they have, like, the Bogdanovich brothers, too? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, the, well, there's two Bogdanoviches, but I think one plays for, uh, Slovenia and the other plays for, oh, okay. Uh, Serbia. Yeah, but the, I, I think Serbia is going to be really strong. Like they're mm -hmm. always strong, but I think they're definitely, definitely uh, going to be a contender. Yeah. You, uh, have you seen the FIBA basketball rating uh, rankings? No, I haven't. Any anything mm -hmm. off kilter? No, I, I haven't even looked, but I'll I'll just pop it up right now. I know that Team Canada was actually quite low. I'm just looking right now. Oh, this is women's. Uh, yeah. uh, Canada's seventh. Um, okay, so we moved USA's, up quite a bit. Yeah, USA, Spain, Germany, Serbia, Australia, Latvia, Canada, Argentina, France, Lithuania. So Germany would probably be ranked third because they won the FIBA World Cup just recently when uh, Dennis Schroeder went off. And he, he's getting up there in age now too, right? Like he's slowed down. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see how they do, and who but, like who else do they have? They have um, the Orlando guys who play with Orlando Magic. Oh right, the, right. the brothers. Those, uh, yeah, yeah. They're 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 solid players. The Wagners. The Wagners, yeah. The Wagners, Franz and uh, Mo. Moritz. Yeah. Moritz. Mo. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. so the rank the rankings: USA one, Spain number two. We didn't. We didn't even mention Spain. No, uh, I. I honestly like. I wasn't even thinking of Spain. I. I thought all their like dynasty years guys are, like, old now. They still have Rudy Fernandez. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm almost certain that he's still on the Spanish national team. Uh, Ricky Rubio might be making a comeback. He's he's still in the mix. I know he retired from the NBA, but I know he, he just recently joined FC Barcelona. Oh, oh! They have Juancho Hernan Gomez, his brother Willie Hernan Gomez. Mm. For anybody who doesn't know, Juancho uh, is also a talented actor. I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. He, he's uh, he's in that Adam Sandler movie. Which one? Oh my, oh my gosh! I got <laughs> the the one about. The jewelry and basketball. Yeah, he's his name is Bo Cruz. the The movie is called Hustle. Ah, uh, yeah. Have you seen it? Remember. It, yeah. It's actually a, it's actually a really good movie. Anthony Edwards is in it. Anthony Edwards plays a villain, and he's like talking trash to to Bo Cruz, and literally, Ant, Anthony Edwards went in that movie playing himself the entire time, quite literally. Oh, oh, I, yeah, I haven't watched it. It's a good movie. You should people should tune in. It's on Netflix. It's called uh, Hustle. Boban, it's Bob, Boban is in there too, eh? Uh, I can't remember, but but Bo Cruz was a raptor. Cool. Yeah. Oh, is Mike's cat making an appearance? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we just found out today that Lindy Waters the third uh, was traded from. OKC to Golden State. I think he he got traded for like a the fifty fifth pick overall or something like that. I saw. Oh wow! Second rounder. That that'll be interesting. Like an interesting transition for him because he's basically played in Oklahoma his entire career. Yeah, this is his life. Like he he grew up in Oklahoma. Yeah. 
played went high played high school there played at uh um oklahoma, oklahoma state. state and then I was playing for the OKC thunder and the blue i wonder how he he'll fit in with uh that warriors team like he's a he's a shooter and he's a slasher i think he'll be fine considering the the kinds of teammates they've had previously and if anything yeah. draymond green will will have something to say or something to do if he yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Draymond better not mess around. You have Indian country after him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm looking forward for him to play him there. Like, cause like, um, yeah, that uh, their offense is. I think I think it's kind of suited for him. Yes, so like the way he plays. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, see see if there's enough shots to go around for him though. But uh, good luck to you, Lindy. Yeah, come on the pod. Absolutely. Come on the pod, Lindy. Mm-hmm gonna add him soon <laughs> yeah all right yeah you got anything else to share no other than no i got i got the oilers uh off my chest i think i can you know reconcile with differences and you know leave it in the past from now on now that i've talked about it on the pod so yeah no. <laughs> all right all right then uh yeah let's head over to our interview with uh mr paul sir of 3x3 basketball association one Okay, we're here with our interview, uh, Mr. Paul Sir, who is the director of 3x3 Basketball Association uh, out of Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, Paul and I actually go back uh, quite a long time, probably uh, probably about a, uh, almost 20 years now um, since we've known each other. So it's, it's really an honor to have you here on our podcast and have you as a guest. Um, yeah, um, how are you doing? I'm doing great, name. It, it's my honor to be with you and Michael. So we do go back a long ways, but uh, having these connections continue on means an awful lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and Mike should be joining us in just a bit. He has to take care of his things, so he might be late. Um, but yeah, uh, I know you're busy. So and we've been working on getting a time sorted out for a couple of weeks. So it's 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 great to have you here. Um, do you, do you want to just, uh, introduce yourself a bit, uh, give the listeners an idea who you are and, you know, kind of your background and those kinds of things? Oh yeah, absolutely. Name. Um, I, my name is Paul, sir. I have been involved in the sport of basketball for my entire life. I grew up in a small town in Midwestern U S in Iowa and, uh, just love basketball right, right from the beginning. And, uh, was fortunate enough to play high school and then uh, university basketball at the Division II level down in the States. I played professionally overseas. When I came back, I played with uh, with a group of guys I played against in college uh, in, a, in a pro league that we played against mostly university teams from the States in the Midwest. And then continued on after our family started with coaching, mostly our kids in community league. Then it evolved into uh, – coaching other uh, other teams all the way from junior high up to high school up to uh, up to university at Concordia where you and I met name and against Michael at Augustana yeah. I coached in <laughs> high school in uh, Edmonton as well I coached uh, in a pro league that ran for a few years here as well uh, when I played overseas I was also a player coach over there so uh, I was the executive director for uh, Alberta Basketball Association for nearly 16 years. Uh, had a radio show with TSN for a number of years before they closed down their sports group and now have a show with Sports 1440. And also, as you indicated, uh, name and uh, have started up a new not-for-profit dedicated to 3x3 basketball called the 3x3 Basketball Association. Wow, that's awesome. That's quite the quite the resume. Um, yeah, I know how influential you have been. Uh, in the basketball community in Edmonton and in the province of Alberta, probably uh, last couple decades since you uh, came back and you were coaching and you were the director of uh, the Alberta Basketball Association. Um, so yeah, just like like I said, it's an honor to have you here. And um, yeah, the way you and I met was you know back in our Concordia days when you were you were coaching with the men's basketball team, and uh, right. I played with uh, one of your sons, Sam, and uh played a lot of ball with your other son ethan and i i did play some pickup with uh with um with steve as well and you know they're all very exceptional basketball players and um enjoyed spending a lot of time with 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 them on the basketball court and 
Uh, I do remember the day that uh, I met you. Um, you came, I think you came in mid season, right? That uh, 05, 06, you were, right. uh, you were assisting with the basketball team. Um, I remember hearing you were coming on board with the team and I was super excited because I knew you, you had played professionally overseas and that you played university basketball in the US. And I was just so excited to have someone else around me who I could just like be a sponge and try to soak in as much as as much as I can from. So it's such an honor to have you here. Well, it's great to be here. And, and I, I, an important connection into the indigenous community is I had the opportunity over a couple of a couple of years, actually about three years, to get to know and do some work alongside the great Alan Ross, who uh, did so much for your community in uh, bringing opportunities to kids, uh, getting the indigenous games going, like just a real visionary and a very humble, wonderful man who just could didn't seem to be able to give enough of himself to help people out. And uh, uh, having you know the opportunity with yourself, name, and many other folks from the uh, various indigenous communities across the province, it's been a you know I, I come right back at you with it is an honor and a privilege uh, to be here today. Thank you. And yeah, it's it's great that you mentioned Alan as well. Like we've talked about Alan so much. He's been a huge influence on our lives as, you know, Mike and myself as basketball players and just also as as people. He's just he was uh like you said, he was so giving and we've we've uh you know, I've been thinking about his uh presence in my life, especially in those early years when I was in Edmonton. And uh, I don't know if I would have made it living in Edmonton and, and being a university student if he wasn't there with his basketball association and, you know, introducing me to the world of, uh, of Indigenous basketball tournaments and those kinds of things and just really giving me an opportunity to, to coach and to give back and just to keep playing because I was playing with the EMBA before I even... I started playing at Concordia and that I think that was really helpful and instrumental in, in me being able to take that next step and, and going to play at Concordia. Well, one thing named that I would point out, and this is, this is also directed at, at Michael as well. The spirit of Alan lives on in both of you because I can, I can just see like from not just from the words that you just spoke, but from your actions of just, carrying on a legacy that uh, that Alan instilled in you uh, about the necessity of giving back and uh, uh, how to impact you through activity and uh, mentor, mentor them and give them uh, role models, give them opportunities to do things that are that are healthy for them, develop their leadership skills, develop their team skills, develop their personal skills. And both you and Michael are doing that uh, very, very well. And, and uh, things like we're doing right now are, are are part of many, many efforts that you both have in terms of being willing to help people out. Oh, thank you so much. And I, like, I um, you know, I, I think highly of Mike as well. And he's done so much work in the in his home community of Muscochise with uh, not only the athletics department at a school, but just with that basketball program and the way that he's just constantly giving up his time. And, you know, I don't have to tell you, like, you know, being a family man, the time that you give to, uh, to you know, youth who are playing the game of basketball, you know, that you're, you, you need to be able to balance your family life and, and being a coach and being an influence on the community. So, um, you know, a, a lot of kudos uh, to Mike and, and what he's doing there with his young family and even, yeah, especially to you. And um, I know for me, like the game of basketball has done so much for my life. It's opened up so many doors for me. It's what motivated me to go to, to college and, uh, and to get an education um, because I wanted to play college basketball. And that's what made me want to go to school. And it's, it's done so much for my life. Well, I, I, I think my, my, I would just add one thing to what you're describing right now. That is exactly what sport can do, uh, is it can be a bridge into much bigger and much better things. Uh, your, your point about Michael balancing life out with having a young family, that is very difficult. When people commit to coaching, uh, those who do not coach don't know how much time it actually takes. 
-hmm. volunteering takes an incredible amount of time and it's a sacrifice and and um oftentimes it's a sacrifice not just by the person uh, actually doing the coaching but by the entire family and it's it's to be respected and not taken lightly because without those volunteers and without those coaches who are giving of themselves and their families who are sharing them with them we wouldn't have the programs and the opportunities that we do have available yeah definitely definitely and uh speaking of opportunities um there are a couple uh you know big events coming up in edmonton through the the 3x3 basketball association that you've had a hand in um can you can you tell us a little bit about those uh those tournaments coming up in Edmonton, I believe it's the 3x3 Hoop City and the Quest Challenger. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of information on that? 100%. Thank you for the chance to do so. Uh, we started having, well, for those who don't know, FIBA stands for the Federal International Basketball Association. And that's the basically the uh, global governing body for the sport of basketball. It sets out the rules, parameters, competitions, etc., that ultimately lead into world championships and Olympic qualifications. And so uh, we started, uh, we at the Alberta Basketball Association started hosting 3x3 events over a dozen years ago, but it evolved into these larger international events back in 2018. Now what we have is called the, as you indicated named, the Hoop City 3x3 Festival. It really is comprised of three layers. Uh, uh, we have our community layer, which is open to all, all kids from nine to 90 to put a team in and to come out and play on July 6th and 7th down at the fan park where everybody was crowding in for the great Oilers playoff run. Uh, but you will, they'll be playing on July 6th and 7th. Uh, and in your age groups, in your ability brackets, uh, you'll get at least four games. So we uh, open this up and reached out to the Indigenous uh, Sport Council of Alberta and yourself name, and you, of course, brought Michael into it, uh, to get the word out because we do have um, opportunities for players to play, whether it's at the community level or into level number two of our event, which is the FIBA 3x3 Quest uh, opportunities for uh, men and women. Now, this is for uh, athletes 18 and older. And uh, what they'll be doing is competing for an opportunity, if they win the tournament, uh, to go to an international event. The women will go and play in what's called a women's series in Saskatoon. Uh, that's against ranked teams from all over the world. That'll happen in the middle of August. And the men will go to Shanghai in uh, September, uh, September uh, 21st and 22nd. And again, they'll be playing in the top men's 3x3 event in the world at that on that particular weekend. So that's level number two. Level number three is the what the women's series, and that's led by Team Canada, which is made up of all Alberta athletes, Michelle and Catherine Plouffe from Edmonton, Paige Crozen and Casey Bosch from Lethbridge. And uh, they will head a very, very strong field of women's teams in their final tune-up tournament before the Paris Olympics. And on the men's side, we have the World Tour. And again, that is the top event for men in the world. It's the equivalent of a Grand Slam event in tennis. And we have five of the top eight ranked teams in the world, including the Americans, uh, the team that uh, they go under Miami, but they're actually the Olympic team. And they feature Jimmer Fredette. And Jimmer <laughs> is the name who played in the NBA and is a legend uh, in uh, NCAA Division I and in China, where he averaged, I, I think, about 35 points a game in the Chinese Pro League. So Jimmer will be here, and uh, there are lots of other teams that are going to be participating in the Olympics. We'll have a slam dunk competition. We'll have a sh long-distance shootout. And we have a celebrity shootout between Michelle and Catherine Plouffe the two top-ranked 3x3 players in the world, not just in Canada, in the world, and Steve Sir, who has held the NCAA record for three-point percentage for a career for 17 years, they're going to shoot off, and the proceeds are going to go to charity. So uh, it's going to be a, you know, it, it's going to be filled with entertainment. We have all kinds of cultural entertainment, all kinds of music, uh, food trucks. Uh, there's opportunities for kids to play basketball, to run athletics. Uh, so it's going to be a, just a great weekend. 
Yeah, that sounds amazing. And to have that those quality of athletes in our city, our city, um, I still say it's my city. I don't live there anymore, but it's Edmonton is home. Um, in, in our city, competing and playing basketball and the opportunity for young people to, to get to see them play and to see what it takes to play at that level. You know, you're talking about that women's team um, from Alberta. You're talking about that Miami team. Uh, just amazing players that are going to be there in the city. And I, I I know, like, for young kids and seeing, like, that level of basketball is going to be a great opportunity. I That would be something that I'm look, I would look for as a young kid to witness and, and to, like, those, those experiences are – are helpful to your development it's it's helpful for you to kind of gauge where you're at um it, it's helpful to like give you that hope and excitement to see like those basketball players playing professionally so this is such a great opportunity for for the city and and for all the people playing basketball there and and thank you so much for um for bringing this to, to edmonton oh it's it, it it you know edmonton's a special place as you indicated name and it's always a city that seems to do things that most cities just can't or won't try to do. And uh, I, I really enjoy being part of that uh, can-do mentality that, re- that exists in this city. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's, it's great to be able to bring it. And, you know, you know, for kids to be able to reach out and touch and watch Olympians. I mean, these, mm-hmm. th- th- that's, that's the pinnacle. And uh, to be able to be around to watch and see, number one, that they're just human beings like them. They're just people like them. And yes, they're really good athletes, but they're good athletes because they worked hard uh, and they persisted. And those are qualities that that we know are important in everybody's life. And so we hope that that kind of bridge and that kind of lesson can be, uh, you know, can be encouraged and hopefully uh, crystallized in, in young people's lives. And by the way, also at our event, we 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 don't just we don't just promote basketball as much as we love it, but we have the Elks coming. They're going to set a tent up. They're going to have Elk players hanging around so kids can see the Elks there. We're going to have the Stingers there. Uh, they're going to wow. we're going to have athletes there as well. So we want this to be like a multi-sport celebration. And and again, have kids just see that athletes are just people too, and. Uh, I just have to make my mind up what goals I want to, uh, why I want to attain in my life, and if I work hard at them, who knows? You you can you if you work hard at something and you really put your mind to it, a lot of times you can reach your goals, and uh, you'll always benefit from being around people who are, are are hard workers and are great examples. Definitely, and uh, yeah, we had Paige Crozen on our show, like on our podcast yeah. uh, a few months ago, and it's. It's so amazing, like being a small town athlete and playing at the levels that she has played and now the the Olympics, which is like the pinnacle of of athletics. Um, so to be able to see people like that, uh, it's going to be an awesome time. And it sounds like a great event. And I'm, I probably have to miss out on it. I'm, I'm coming to Edmonton a couple of weeks later, but uh, I'm so happy that uh, this is happening in our, in our city. Um, you, you did uh, mention that you do have some involvement with the uh, Indigenous Sport Council of Alberta. Uh, I'm just wondering what opportunities are available for Indigenous athletes at the tournament and and how can athletes access those opportunities? I, I, I'm so glad you asked that. We have a number of scholarships available to teams that if they uh, from the Indigenous community, if they want to participate, in the Hoop City Community Tournament or in the Quest, go to do-north-events.ca, do-north-events.ca, uh, click on the Hoop City 3x3 link, and you can register your team there. And so we want to make sure everybody knows you have to do June 30th, so that's through Sunday, uh, to sign up. So if you uh, if you are still interested in signing up, we'd love to have you. So just go to do north events.ca and sign up. And if you have any issues, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me via email and I'll get right back to you. We have great people working with uh, with registration. So uh, by all means, go to it. And 
we just really want to support and don't want there to be any barriers or any reason for kids in particular uh, to not be able to play in an event like this. So we don't want finances to be a restriction. So some great sponsors have stepped forward and we're proud to be able to offer this opportunity. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I, I did mention it to, uh, to Mike. Uh, unfortunately, he's not, he's hasn't been able to join us yet, but, uh, I did mention the opportunity to play in the quest and he's kind of perked his ears up a little bit about, uh, putting a team together and, and playing in that tournament again, because I know that he played in it, uh, in 2019 when it was at West Edmonton mall. Yep. Um, yeah. I so, that. Yeah. So I, I know he had a, a great time playing there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's just a, a great opportunity for people to get involved, to also, you know, experience the entire weekend and to, you know, just to get out in the ball community. Like I love being in the basketball community. I love walking in a gym, being around everybody, love talking basketball, catching up, you know, there's, basketball just brings us so much. It, there's also, also a social aspect of it that it's just, it's awesome. It's a great vibe. It really is. And it's, a an electric atmosphere. So, uh, you know, we'll have a great DJ going. We'll have an encore announcer that's really, really dynamic. So it'll be a lot of fun for people. And and we really encourage people, come on out, uh, get a team in. But if you can't get a team in or you just want to watch great basketball, just come join us. You're going to have a wonderful time. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much again, Paul, for being here. Uh, we don't want to take up too much of your time. I know how busy you are. You have your grandkids there, which, you know, all that time is so valuable. So, you know, I just want to express how uh, appreciative uh, Mike and I are that you could join us on our podcast and, and, you know, just be a part of this and you share those, these experiences that are, are coming up in the city. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure name. And uh, to you and Mike, all the best, in your career endeavors. Thank you for doing all the work that you are doing. Keep it up. And uh, I look forward to the next time that our paths cross. Definitely. It's been too long. It has been. All the best, all right. name. All yeah, the best you too, Michael. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Take care.